Right, I've been asked to do a video on what's in my bag. Um, I've been putting it off for a while, uh, for no particular reason. Um, I just didn't think it was all that relevant with what I do. However, thinking about it more, um, I'm starting to realise it is relevant. Not just what's in my bag, but what's in my office and what's in my life, basically. So, um, I'm going to start with uh, what I use and why I use it. We'll start with the bags. My Low Pro Pro Runner 45. I've had this bag for years, it's indestructible, it's massive, and most importantly, it can fit my laptop. Which brings me on to my second piece, which is my laptop. This is just a MacBook Pro, I've had it for quite a few years now. It's fantastic for when I go traveling, because it's small enough that it fits in my bag, I can back up all my images, I can even do a bit of editing as well. This is my Low Pro Pro Rover 45 all weather bag. Basically, it's a hiking rucksack that allows you to carry your usual hiking paraphernalia as well as all your camera gear. So it fits a tripod on the side, it fits water, it'll fit your jacket, your tent, ice axe, crampons, everything, your maps. And inside here we have this compartment with the two inserts, and those two inserts will hold all of your camera and lenses. It's a fantastic bag, and it is very well made, but it's not cheap. Now, we're going to move on to my basic kit. Some that's always in my bag, regardless of where I'm going and what I'm shooting, and some that I choose more selectively depending on what I'm going to do that day. We'll start with filters. Every landscape photographer needs filters. These are my Nissi filters. I've got a good range of ND filters and ND graduated filters. Lenses. This is my Canon 70-200 f4 lens. Why f4 rather than f2.8? Because it's used primarily for landscapes, so I don't need the big aperture, and it's a lot smaller and a lot lighter than the 2.8. My Zeiss Distagon 21mm prime lens. This is one of the best landscape lenses that I own. It's absolutely fantastic. It's so sharp and so well made. An excellent choice for any landscape photographer. I also have a Canon 1.8 85mm lens. I use this for portraits. It's a nice lens. 50mm 1.4, again, used for portraits. This is my Lee foundation holder and my Heliopan polarizer. A very expensive filter but gets used 99% of the time, so definitely a good investment. I also shoot with a Canon 5D Mark III and a Canon 24-70L lens f2.8, which is on the tripod at the minute, which I'm using to film this video. So I can't show you that, obviously. My tripod. This is a Manfrotto 055CX Pro 3. Why it's got such a long name, I do not know but it's a carbon fiber legs with a ball head, which is a 498 RC2. This ball head is rubbish. Don't get it, I'm stuck with it, I'm gonna replace it. I'll tell you why it's rubbish. If you're framing up a shot and you want to pan the head, say you're doing a panoramic or you just wanna turn left or turn right, you pan the head like so, and then you want to lock the head off, fine, it's locked off. But if you pan the head and it sits there, you can't lock the head off. And that's because of this. Now, it's not necessarily the head's fault and it's not the leg's fault. It's the fact that the two don't marry up, which is a bit of a surprise because they're both Manfrotto um, and they were recommended to go together. So you can see that's the problem. So you have to end up turning the whole tripod. It's Bloody annoying. So that head's going basically. This is a very cheap, simple cable release. All I need, I don't need an intervalometer, I just need to be able to lock it off and take pictures without touching the camera. Every photographer, every photographer needs a lens cloth, a blower, and some spray. You always need to keep your lenses clean when out in the field and when you're back home, as well as your filters. What else have we got? Right, this is my Jobby Sling. 
It's basically a camera strap that screws into the bottom of your camera where your tripod plate would go and you throw it over your shoulder. It's great for when walking, hiking, out and about. You know, there's my dog down here. Hey, a lot of people ask me about filming. This is my GoPro um, Hero 3 Plus Black. Um, I also have this GoPro three-way mount, which means I can film like this. It also has little feet on the bottom so it can stand up. Um, and it's just great, folds down, fits in your pocket. Perfect. That's it, that's what I use for most of my filming when doing videos. I also have a GoPro Jaws clamp. Uh, this is pretty cool as well, I don't always take it with me. But it's handy because it can clamp onto the tripod and I can use that to film a time lapse or something or I can film myself whilst walking with the tripod on my shoulder which I'm sure you've seen. CDs. I always carry with me three blank discs. Not for recording any kind of data but if you're shooting on a beach or in a muddy field you drop your CDs on the ground and you put each foot of your tripod in the hole of the CD and that stops your tripod sinking in the sand or the mud. Big stopper, little stopper, cheat sheets. They basically convert your exposure. So you have a quick look and you take a meter reading and then you can convert it on here so you get the exposure needed when you put the filter in. They're handy, always keep them nearby. Tape, you always need tape, 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 tape. If you have to take one thing with you out in the field, take some tape. It's eternally useful. Ah, a really good head torch. This is needed for when doing dawn shoots, dusk shoots, nighttime camping, everything. This is my Leatherman Skeletool. It's a multi tool, it's got pliers, it's got a screwdriver, it's got a knife. It's really well made, really sharp, really lightweight, and very handy. It goes everywhere with me. Spirit level. This slots on the top of your camera on your shoe, hot shoe, um, and this just tells you that your camera's level. Really handy. Spare memory cards. Whee! Spare memory cards. Always, 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 always. No matter how much data or how much memory having one card, if that card fails, you need a spare. Spare battery, always. Even though the Canon batteries last forever, you need a spare. Garmin E-Trex GPS, great in an emergency. I don't rely on it because I have a good collection of maps, but the GPS is great if you get lost or if the weather closes in, or you just need a bit of confidence to know exactly where you are. Food, always take some sort of snack. Always put a snack in your bag. Even if you're not hungry, put a snack in your bag and take some water. You cannot be creative if you are hungry. You just can't do it. Also, you want to protect yourself. So, a good lightweight waterproof jacket. You also need a waterproof jacket for your camera. This is just a really cheap basic one off eBay. I think it was about 10 pounds. Put this over your camera and it protects it from heavy rainfall. I always pack a small umbrella in my bag. It weighs nothing. But if the rains come, this might just save you a shot. I don't care if it's the middle of summer. Get some gloves. You need gloves because if your fingers get cold and numb, it's going to be difficult to operate the camera, your morale is going to get low, you're not going to get images that you need. The next item is my latest purchase. And I'm very excited to share this with you. I've been talking about it for a while. I haven't revealed that I've bought this yet but I really think it's going to change the way I do photography. These are my chest waders. Actually, no, they're hip waders. These are wellies that go all the way up. Now, I had a pair of wellies, I have a pair of wellies, but you can only get so far out into the water. So, we've got these bad boys. And I've not used them yet, but I cannot wait to get these on and get wading through the rivers, wading into the lakes and get alternative perspectives that other photographers will not get from the dry land. Okay, so that's the equipment done. That's the boring stuff. That's, you know, 
everyone's got a DSLR, everyone's got lenses, they're all different, they all do different things. Some people love them, some people hate them, some people like Nikon, some people like Canon, some people like Sony. So I don't think the kit is all that important. What I'm going to talk about now are things that I use for landscape photography that you may not think of and things that can greatly improve your chances of getting good images. Okay, so we'll start off here. This, this is my office. This is where I spend a lot of my time doing all things photography. So this is my space that has been designed to inspire me and to get me motivated. So first things first, I keep a notebook by my computer. I'm always scribbling down ideas and locations and things in this notebook. It's great, it's handy to have, you need this. You need something like this. Even if it's a scrap of paper, scribble it down. Here, just behind my computer, I have a map of the world. This just helps me get a visualization of places I could go. It's, it's, I don't use this to decide where to travel, but I look at it and it inspires me to think about going to a part of the world that I would have never thought of. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about is so important and it will get you the images that you need. Forget buying a new lens, forget buying a new camera or a new bag or new filters, they all help. But what you really need is inspiration. So my advice is to go out and get some books. Get books, get magazines, get anything you can. I have a shelf full of books. Ugh, some are photography books, some are not photography books, but they all inspire me to get out. This The Light Elsewhere, fantastic book which infuses rock climbing and photography and adventure. Galen Rowell's A Retrospective. Get these books, sit down, read them. They will inspire you. They will inspire you to get out. Randall finds cold. He doesn't do any photography, but what he does is he goes on adventures and he pushes the boundaries. Read this at night time with a nice glass of whiskey. The next day, you'll be halfway up a mountain with your camera. Guaranteed. Magazines. I'm a big fan of magazines. Outdoor photography is my favorite, but there are loads to choose from. Wild Africa. It's just book of beautiful images, just an amazing book, um, again it just inspired me to go to South Africa, so definitely worth a read. I'm not just, I'm not plugging these books in any way, but just have a look what's out there, get a book, it's great looking online, it's great looking at 500 pics and Flickr, but you cannot beat a good book, I promise you, you cannot beat it, the smell, the print, the paper, amazing, absolutely amazing. Right, so I'm gonna talk a bit more about my office. Um, now this is just a spare room in my house that I've converted. Um, now in the olden days, perhaps if you were lucky, you would have a dark room. Um, in the digital age, I suppose you could call this my light room. I don't like that, it's cheesy, but it's my office. So um, I've set it up in a way that means it's functional and it's a place to come and relax and get inspired. I like to spend a lot of time in here. So uh, very quickly, I'll talk you through this. This is a kitchen worktop from Ikea, 30 quid, bosh. Couple of, uh, couple of drawers from Ikea. Again, I think these are designed for bedrooms. They're like 25 quid each, put it all together. And what you get is a full length desk, which means I can cut prints, I can look at prints, I can read books, magazines, write things down, everything. On this wall behind me, I have a couple of motivational posters and frames just there to glance at and they always help inspire me when I'm feeling a bit demotivated along with my world map and my collection of books and magazines. On the wall to my left over here, this is my blank wall. This is where I put up all of my prints or a lot of my prints. And it just helps me step back and look at them, perhaps get a different view than I would on the monitor, see what needs improving um, see how I can better the shot next time and it's really nice just to have a big visual display of some of my favorite images and again it inspires me to get out there and take more pictures um, here in front of me I have my printer that's a Canon Pixma Pro 10s um, it's a fantastic printer uh, it hasn't put a foot wrong 
and, and it prints really well. It's mm, relatively economical, probably works about, out about the same as getting my prints done in a lab, but I can get it done here instantly, and that's really good. Other things you might not think about. I've made sure I've painted three of the wall white. Um, this green wall, um, I've done a soft green so that when I'm sat here at the computer, it's more of a relaxing environment. What's important is my light bulb. I have a daylight balanced bulb in there. It's not one of these orange ones. Uh, if I wanna feel warm and cozy, I'll put my lamp on. This bulb is balanced to daylight and that means that when I look at my prints, I'm getting an accurate representation of the color. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've taken away a few tips. Uh, for more information on everything I've talked about here today, you can go to my blog. I'm gonna write a piece about this and you can see more details. If you like the video as well, please do subscribe, find me on Twitter, find me on Facebook, find me on Flickr, and now you can find me on Instagram. It's all in the description below. Thanks for watching.